hello everyone in this presentation we go through the theories of triaxial testing the triaxial testing we do for measurement of the cohesion and the friction of ang angle of internal friction for our rock sample and obviously it also gives our ucs strength in case of our uniaxial strength strength testing we only had this single axis of operation we didn't have this kind of any kind of confinement pressure over our sample core but in this case we shall be having a oil bath that will be giving a confining pressure confinement pressure over our sample purpose of this experiment is to measure this cohesion c and the angle of internal friction that is phi however here we don't have direct control over our plane of failure so we also don't have control over our shear force on that plane of failure and the compressive strength on that particular plane of failure as you can understand when this sample would break it would break somewhat like in a in a particular angle and in a orientation that is totally unknown to us that's why we won't have any direct control over this tau and sigma but however we can control our principal stresses and therefrom we can actually get values for this we will see how we would obviously use mohr circle for this and for this experimental setup it is basically the same ucs like thing but it, this time it is inside a oil bath and that oil bath is pressurized with a pump and as, as you can understand if we directly put our sample in the oil bath the oil itself would actually change the property of our sample that's why we put our sample inside this latex latex tubing so that oil that doesn't directly interacts with the sample and we put the sample around this iron iron pieces and after sealing it properly we put this inside a chamber where we have this uh, pressurized oil pipe connected that creates a confinement pressure inside this chamber and here is a movable piston kind of setup here that actually pushes the sample inside it the sample is lying here in this orientation and this shaft is actually actually pressing the sample now as i as, as i had said previously that we that don't have direct control over this tau and sigma so we control the principal stresses in, instead here sigma 1 is the axial load we are putting and sigma 3 is the confining pressure that we are creating over that oil bath so we will just see how this equation only we have re rewritten in this form uh, as we uh, as we had previously discussed in case of more more coulomb failure it is basically a envelope of a straight line and and the point where it intersects at that particular state or at that particular plane of orientation our sample breaks so next we would see that for this equation what we are rewriting that same tau and sigma based equation in terms of principal stresses this portion is actually this part of the line first first let, let us understand first let us let us understand that if this is a mohr circle then certainly this this point is my sigma 1 and this is my sigma 3 and this point is certainly my sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2 this value corresponds to this point and i am taking a sin theta of it so that is this portion so 
sorry sin phi of it and phi is this angle that angle of internal friction and what is sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 that is obviously radius of this circle. So, this portion equals to this length and here we have another thing that is cohesion. Cohesion is the intercept of this more, more coulomb envelope. So, this, this much is your cohesion, if this much is your cohesion then cos phi of it is certainly this red line and this red portion is equals to this portion. So, adding these two up I actually get this equation and what this red dot is about it is that point where actually my sample fails. So, the more coulomb ferial criteria that I had that is tau equal to c plus sigma tan phi this this point the tau and sigma value of this this red point corresponds to this tau and sigma. So, if I extend this line, this is my sigma and this blue, blue line, that blue length is my tau. So, what this equation is basically saying that my cohesion that is C is actually this portion of the line plus my sigma that is this length into tan phi. So, tan of this phi equals to this portion. So, adding up this two I get that get the value of tau. This is what is more this is what this formula tries to explain to us and we just saw that these this formula is nothing but sorry this formula is nothing but a rewriting of this same expression but in terms of my sigma 1 and sigma 3 and this one is in terms of sigma and tau when we do this experiment of with multiple sigma 3 values we get different more circles for it and for each experiment we get different uh, different points of failure and if, if we just draw these three more circles for 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 say different con confinement values and as, as you as you can interpret that if we increase our confinement pressure the strength that stress at that sigma 1 at which the sample will be break it will be higher. Let us say for this case when my confinement pressure is lower it is breaking at a lower, a lower sigma 1. When it is increasing my sigma my, my sigma 1 is also increasing. But however drawing these more circles and getting it by connecting the same line is often becomes tough because our experiments are not 100 percent accurate. So, if we take a real data it will looks it will it will look somewhat like this that you will see that you will not be able to draw a line that accurately. So, what we do instead we plot sigma 1 versus sigma 3 and then we then we draw a line through it and in, in due course we will see that we are using the same equation only, but using the data in a different way by plotting sigma 1 versus sigma 3. And as you can see that when sigma 3 is 0, what value sigma 1 is that is your UCS only. So, intercept of this line is obviously your, your UCS. That, in, that intercept of my sigma 1 and sigma 3 plot line is obviously my UCS that is denoted as sigma c i here and the slope of this line and the slope of this line uh, is uh, if, if it is m then 
my angle of internal friction becomes sin inverse m minus 1 by m plus 1 and my cohesion becomes sigma ci that is my in inter that is intercept of this line multiplied by 1 minus sin phi by 2 cos phi and in next few slides we will see how these two formula actually comes from this plot and these are some typical values that you can expect from a sample now coming to the explanations we just saw these two these two are similar equations just written in a different format now if you see we can actually rewrite this equation in a simplified manner in y equal to mx plus c format so we just multiply the whole thing with 2 and bring the sigma 1 components on left and sigma 3 components on right so by doing this we get this in this format now you can see it's it's in y equal to mx plus c format when my y is this sigma 1 and x is my sigma 2 and this is this portion is my m and this portion is, is my c so you can just see if this is my m so then this portion is obviously sin phi that m minus 1 by m plus 1 is obviously my sin phi and if I do a inverse of it I get the angle of internal friction that is phi and for this portion if this is my intercept of this line this line I mean to say but this equation of this line is actually this one and if this is my intercept that sigma ci then just by changing the side I can write my c or mother the cohesion equals to sigma ci multiplied by 1 minus sin phi by 2 cos phi so this is the way actually we use the data from our triaxial experiment to get our cohesion and angle of internal friction and meanwhile we also get our sigma ci that is my uc uh, that un uniaxial strength and what is my uniaxial strength i again repeat that is simply when i extend this line and the point where the line intercepts with my y axis now overall from this experiment we get c phi and you will also notice when we do this experiment repeatedly in a correct manner that when the sample breaks it breaks in a particular angle by sample break what I mean to say is suppose this was your sample and every time you repeat this experiment you would actually see in a particular angle the sample is breaking every time somewhat near about a particular angle so why and that angle is actually your 45 degree plus 5 by 2 this will be your homework to explain that why this angle is 45 plus 5 by 2 you can actually if you just look into the Mohr circle that we had drawn previously you, you should be able to understand it you should be able to explain it well however in case many of you are not able to answer it I would add another video explaining why that angle at which this breakage occurs is 45 degree plus 5 by 2 so uh, thank you everyone